Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. Today's interview with writer Annie Pru made me think about climate change in a new way. Pru is famous for her fiction, but her new book, Fen, Bog, and Swamp, is a nonfiction book about the wetlands. And in this interview with NPR's Leila Faddle, she points out how self-centered a lot of the conversations around climate change is. She doesn't put it exactly like that. She's a little nicer about it. She says that we tend to view things in the natural world, quote, in terms of what use it is to humans. Which, sure, might be obvious, but is also, arguably, why we're in this mess in the first place. The Pulitzer Prize-winning novelist Annie Prue is best known for her fiction, The Shipping News and Brokeback Mountain, to name just two. Her newest book, though, is something very different. Fan Bog and Swamp is nonfiction and a love letter to America's wetlands, ecosystems that are rapidly disappearing. Here's Prue reading from the book. Before the last wetlands disappear, I wanted to know more about the world we are losing. What was a world of fens, bogs, and swamps, and what meaning did these peatlands have, not only for humans, but for all other life on Earth? She says she was compelled to write this book because of the worsening effects of climate change. It began when I found that I could not concentrate on writing fiction, which is what I am usually writing. I was too concerned with what was happening to the natural world, and I felt I knew very little about wetlands. So the way I learn about something is to write about it. So I began reading and taking notes and scribbling. After a while, I had something that looked like an essay, and I sent it to my agent, not particularly expecting it to be published, but I thought it might have a place somewhere. To my surprise, she suggested that it could be a book. And in this journey of of learning, what did you learn about um, what's happening to fens, bogs, and swamps? How much time do we have? (laughs) We tend to tag everything in the natural world in terms of what use it is to humans. And I was curious to know how it fit in with the great scheme of life, how it belonged to other parts of the world, how the things were knit together uh, between land and water and creatures and weather and climate change. I wasn't looking for benefits to humans as an explanation of anything. I was looking for how these guys worked with each other. But also, I was very curious about human responses to these wetlands. So that took me into the history. That, of course, was the fun part, poking around with the people of the Fen, the battle in the bogs and the various swamps in the North America that were drained and made into productive soil. You talk about poking around in history, and you write in your book that the history of wetlands is the history of their destruction. Could you talk about that? That's, I think, a very pertinent way of saying it. Because the peatlands have never been regarded by most people as something that's a necessary part of life, but as an obstruction, something that's in the way. The ideal, of course, is agriculture for most people. It wasn't a measure of any kind of utility to talk about peat-producing wetlands as helpful. So it was really a change of attitude more than anything else that I stumbled on. It's really hard to read about this sort of thing because people insist on thinking of the natural world only in terms of utility to humanity. Hmm. We don't see ourselves as part of the system, but as lords and rulers of the natural world. So that was lesson one. And that's how we are where we are today when you talk about climate change and destruction of the planet. Your book, when you write about the wetlands, you write about beauty in places where humans have often described bad smells and things that are ugly, and you see beauty in them. That was actually quite a lot of fun, looking at the way people regarded the fins. And we started out with the fins because... It's a succession from fen to bog to swamp, gradually drying up all the time. Hmm. 
the problem with destroying the fens, bogs, and swamps is they are holding in CO2 and methane gas. And the more we rip them up, the more CO2 and methane comes floating into the atmosphere, and the faster the Earth will be warming. But that doesn't occur to us to consider that as a real problem for many people, except for ecologists and those deeply concerned about the climate crisis. In the book, you also write about indigenous communities that work with the land, within the natural system, to understand it, to live on it, to survive within it. And then how North American and European colonial governments, British imperialism in particular, saw nature as something to be exploited. How has that shifted when you look at today's world and the landscape? I'm not so sure it has shifted. I think we still do look at swamplands and bogs and fens as candidates for drainage. And I think there will forever be people who want to drain wetlands. They don't see how they could be useful. But there are signs here and there that readapting the idea of utility to humans, there's a place for wetlands. Many gardeners buy bales of peat that's been dug up and dried and packaged because it enriches their garden soil. Peat has the extraordinary ability to hold many times its weight in water. You end the book with this line. In the end, all humans will be haunted by waters. What do you want readers to walk away with? Is this book a call to action? No, it isn't a call to action and it has been mistaken as such. Mm. It's simply what it was for me. That is, to make a differentiation between the kinds of forms that the wetlands that make peat take, because they've been so much in the news, just to know what the difference is between fen, bog, and swamp, to be able to go into a wetland and look around at it and say, aha, I know what this is. This is a swamp. It's full of trees. Or this is a bog full of quaking sphagnum moss. It's more didactic than the call to arms. That's just not my thing. Annie Prue is the author of Fen, Bog, and Swamp, A Short History of Peatland Destruction and Its Role in the Climate Crisis. Annie, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you so much for having me. 